In this video, we have two functions. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these functions and go through each of the four basic function operations that we've been talking about. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide these expressions. And then we're going to state the domain for each of them. Now, for the most part, for everything that you guys see, the domain should be all real numbers, unless you see one of two things right now. Uh, that being fractions, because you can't have a denominator in the fraction. And the other thing you have to watch out for would be square roots, because we're not allowed to have negative radicands. So those are the guys that can limit our um, domain. Later on, towards the end of the semester, we're going to talk about some other expressions that we see that can limit our domain. But right now, for most of the stuff you're going to see, the two big expressions that limit our domain will be fractions and square roots. So let's look at what happens when I do f plus g of x. Well, f plus g of x just means to take f of x and g of x and add them. <clears throat> So that means 3x minus 4 plus g of x, which is 4x plus 1. And when I combine these guys, because it is just addition, we get 7x and minus 3. So that's going to be the addition of these two functions. When it asks for the domain, my domain, well, let's see. You had no restrictions on either of these guys because they weren't fractions. They didn't have square roots. Their sum is just another polynomial, so the domain should be all real numbers. You can plug in any value that you want to in for x, and you're going to be fine. Part b would be to do f minus g of x. So as we stated at the top of this series, that means f of x minus g of x. So we're going to do 3x minus 4 minus g of x, which is 4x plus 1. Uh, we need to do a little bit of house cleaning here uh, because we've got that subtraction sign. I don't want to mess up anything. So it becomes negative 4x and minus 1. And now we combine like terms. We get negative x minus 5. Again, let's talk about the domain. There were no restrictions on the original f and g. And we look here, this is just another polynomial expression. No fractions, no radicals, no square roots. So my domain should still be all real numbers. All right, well, let's keep on going. That was addition and subtraction. Uh, then we have multiplication. Let's look at the product. If I do f g of x. So that means f of x times g of x. All right, again, f of x is 3x minus 4, and g of x is 4x plus 1. And so this is just a nice little exercise of can you multiply? Can you multiply two binomials? Can you FOIL? And the answer is uh, yeah. I mean, at this point, we've already talked about factoring, so you should know how to factor, which means you know how to multiply. So distribute, we would have 12x squared plus 3x when you distribute the 3x, distribute the negative 4, so minus 16x minus 4. And then we just combine like terms. So 12x squared, uh, we get negative 13x here in the middle, and then minus 4. Again, we see no square roots, we see no fractions, so we should be able to say that our domain is still all real numbers. When you come across this problem in the homework, once you type in negative infinity to infinity the first time, you might want to copy that guy so that you can paste it later on. Just save you a little bit of work. All right, finally, let's look at doing division. So f divided by g of x. So that means f of x divided by g of x. So the expression is 3x minus 4 over 4x plus 1. Uh, we can't simplify this. There's not really a whole lot for us to do. But now we need to talk about what our domain is. So our domain 
is now not going to be all real numbers. Even though individually these guys have a domain of all real numbers, when you do the division, you have to avoid creating a denominator that's zero. So when you think about this, you gotta be thinking about this question. Can 4x plus one ever equal zero? And we know that it can, because if you solve this, you get negative one over four. And this goes back to discussions we had previously about rational expressions and rational equations, restricted values, right? So this says that x equals negative one fourth makes my denominator zero, so that's my restricted value. So when we were trying to talk about what our domain is, our domain is going to be everything but negative one fourth. So our domain is going to be from negative infinity up to negative one fourth parentheses because we can't include that. And then union, we go just to the other side of this on the right side of negative one fourth and we keep on going to infinity. So this is how you would describe everything, all real numbers, but removing that single value of negative one fourth. All right, so there you have it. Operations with functions. Up next, function composition. It's even funner.